how I ruined my Umrah and how you can save yourself from making the same mistake. Assalamu alaikum, this is your brother Muhammad al Shad, and in this video I wanted to share with you how my first ever Umrah was destroyed. Um, and I, I think there's so many important lessons in this. So anyway, before we get started, I just wanted to say that we release videos every single day. If you're watching this on social media, you're probably missing out some good stuff, right? Because of the time that you come online or sometimes of what time we post. And so therefore, I really, really recommend that you notification as well. So let me tell you about my first ever Umrah, right? So this is like the year 2003. Maybe some of you weren't even born, right? And I'm thinking about going on Umrah and I'm like, just graduated from university. I'm like, I've got to go on Umrah. I've kind of started practicing. I want to do this, right? So I decided to go and I call up the travel agents. In those days, there wasn't really much of an internet, right? Um, I call up the travel agents and I speak to them and I say, right, I want to go on Umrah. And the guy says, right, very simple. Flights, no problem. Accommodation. Tell me, when it comes to your accommodation, do you want five star and far, meaning it's far from the Haram, right, from the Kaaba, or do you want close and grimy, like horrible, right? So five star and far or close and grimy. And me, I, you know, I, I prefer like nicer things. Um, so I said, look, I don't mind if it's a little bit far, like how far are you talking? He's like, oh, I don't know, five, 600 meters. I'm like, okay, that's fine. As long as it's five stars, as long as it's like nice, that's no problem, right? So the guy's like, yeah, yeah, it's going to be super nice. It's like five star. It's perfect. It's exactly what you want. If it was close, it'd be grimy. I said, okay, fine. So anyway, get ready. Go to uh, Medina. Fly out to Medina first. I actually um, booked online uh, an intercontinental hotel uh, for Medina. It was beautiful. Um, and, you know, five star, really close to the haram. Perfect. Okay. Now, when we get to uh, the time to put ihram on, put my ihram on in Medina and we then drive to Mecca, right? So I've got my ihram on, like mentally I'm prepared, you know, I'm, I'm reading my adkar, I'm doing everything, this, 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 right? We get to um, Mecca. And by the way, I'm fasting at this point, right? I decided to go in Ramadan, which is an amazing time to go, um, but I'm fasting and I'm kind of like, you know, getting to Mecca. We get to Mecca and we cannot find the hotel. Like I'm with someone who is from Saudi and they can't find the hotel like no one knows about this hotel and we're looking everywhere we're looking we're looking we're looking we're looking we're looking cannot find the hotel even the taxi driver he didn't have a clue so I'm starting to get worried now I'm like how can this be a five-star hotel and no one has ever ever heard of it anyway eventually after loads of time of waiting alhamdulillah like we found the hotel so we go to the hotel enter the hotel and it's down some back alley and it's far away from the haram and it's like a small back alley I go into it and there are people sleeping all over the lobby. So you imagine like it's a slightly, it's a big hall um, and there's people sleeping everywhere. And then I go and I go to the reception and there's nobody at reception. So I'm like ringing the bell, I'm waiting and I'm asking and I'm with one of my cousins, we both decided to do Umrah together. And I can't, I can't find anyone to help us. So at this point I'm thinking, what on earth is going on, right? Like there's people sleeping in the lobby and there's no one here working at the hotel. So I'm trying to phone England at some crazy cost, like the, the travel agent, like what's going on? Why is there nobody here? This and that. And so then the guy comes, some guy, he rings me, oh, Muhammad Arshad, yes, it's me. Okay, come, come, come. He comes, he starts showing me the room and the room was terrible. Just like the hotel, it was terrible. Like Literally, it was just like some old beds and there was one little fridge in the middle of it and absolutely nothing else. It was like terrible. Um, and so at this point, I was like, what on earth has happened? So I started like arguing with the guy. I started saying, what's going on? Why is it that, you know, my room is not ready and what have you done? And I paid for this and this. And I just basically lost it, right? Like I didn't go mad at him, but I felt like it was not appropriate because I was in Ihram. Like I was in Ihram. And, you know, in Ihram, there's a certain state and a way of being that you need to do. Uh, and I don't feel, I felt at that moment, I broke it, right? I lost my cool, I got upset, um, and I feel like I failed my test. You know, this is how I ruined my Umrah. This is how I kind of failed the test. Um, so anyway, I kind of, uh, you know, what should have been a really beautiful moment, I kind of ruined it in that sense. And anyway, we kind of put our bags away and said, look, let's just go and do Umrah anyway. And then we left, we went to the Haram, it was amazing, you know, seeing the Kaaba for the first time and doing Tawaf and doing all this stuff and like it was just, it was just mind blowing to do it. But I feel like in my Ihram, that was my test and I feel like I failed it, right? So anyway, that, that kind of happened and you know, Umrah was wonderful, it was an amazing time. 
a few years later, there were some uh, cousins and kids and family that I would teach Quran to. We decided to do an Umrah trip together. So the parents said, why don't you take the kids? And I was like, okay, fine, I'll take the kids. I went with a couple of adults. We had three, four, five kids. And we all went to Umrah. Okay, same thing. Go to Medina first. Chill out in Medina. No, nice hotel. Everything's fine. Then we're on the way to Mecca, right? And while we're going there, I'm recollecting in my mind. I'm like, oh my God. Like, I remember last time I ruined my Umrah, right? And I'm like, look, I'm wearing Ihram. We're going to get tested. I'm going to be tested. So then what I did is I basically... <laughs> Uh, told all the kids and I told the adults and everyone, I said, listen guys, when we get to Mecca, we will be tested. Like something's going to happen. You're going to be in Ihram. You need to keep the cool. You cannot ruin your Umrah. You have to make sure that you keep cool. Leave things to me. I will be Mr. Cool this time, right? So anyway, we get to there. Um, and at this point, the Mecca towers, you know, those master's towers, they've only built one of those towers. So the first ever tower. So anyway, we get to the hotel. It's a beautiful five-star hotel. It's exactly as we need. It's close by. It's good. We get there and at reception, I give them the details and he goes, we do not have a booking for you. I'm like, what? He's like, yeah, we can't find your booking. Do you have this? Do you have this? I'm like, duh, duh, duh. anyway, I'm like, you know what? Not to worry. He's like, we don't have a room for you. All this. I'm like, no problem. It's absolutely fine. No worries at all. No problem. You don't have a room? No worries. And I'm so cool. I'm so calm. I'm so like confident. I'm like, no problem. No problem. Whatever they're throwing at me, I'm just like, no problem. Right? And so I'm like, guys, do you mind just keeping our luggage here? We're gonna go do we're gonna go do our umrah and stuff. And they're like, Yeah, yeah, keep keep the luggage, no problem. So anyway, we went away, we went to do our umrah, it was amazing, it was beautiful, it was like in the middle of the night, um, and we were just like with the kids, it was so quiet, we did the tawaf, we did the sa'i, we finished, we, we kinda of waited there till fajr, um, we got ready, and then we kinda of came back to the hotel, we're like, Okay, give us our room. And then they were like, Okay, well, we have a little bit of confusion, but anyway, here's your rooms. Right? And then I went to sleep and I was like, wow, alhamdulillah, like we did get tested, you know? Um, and, and there's some big, big lessons from this story. And this is why I'm telling you the story because I really want you to save yourself um, from making some of the mistakes and learn some of the bigger lessons. Um, so the first lesson I would say is that we need to realize that if we're prepared for the test, the test will be easier. If you're prepared for the test, the test will be easier. So the second time around, because I was prepared, it was much easier. And I wish people had like, told me in those days that, look, this is going to happen. So as human beings, we need to realize that there's certain situations that you're going to enter, you will be tested. And you know also that there's certain topics that you will be tested. I always say, Allah does not test me with aubergines. Like, I'm not really a big fan of eating aubergines. So Allah doesn't test me by depriving me of aubergines. And I'm like, oh my God, that's a huge test. No, no. I get tested with chicken. I love chicken. So if I don't have chicken, then it's a test. So you know what your trigger tests are, right? What are the things that might actually get you in that way? So think about the tests and realize that these tests, if you prepare for them, even mentally just going through, okay, this is going to happen and this is the way I'm going to deal with it. Even that can really help you to do much, much better when it comes to these tests that you go through. So that's the first thing. Be prepared to be tested and the test will be easier. Um, the second thing that I want to share with you is learn from the things that happen to you to improve yourself and your life. Learn from the things that will happen to you to improve yourself and your life. Okay, so I am like, I'm like complete now. I feel complete with my first Umrah. Like I was younger then. I didn't have that much Islamic knowledge and I wasn't patient. And, and I, I accept that I was that. And I don't see it as a big issue. Why? Because the second time around I went, I actually learned from my first experience. The worst thing I can do in my life is actually go through a mistake in my life, repent for it or, you know, ask Allah for forgiveness and then do it again and then do it again and then and not learn any of the lessons from it, right? So every time we do something wrong, every time we make a mistake, our aim should be, okay, look, we're happy, like we forgive ourselves, we're human, Allah will forgive us for the sin, we should forgive ourselves, but now we have to learn from that and we have to be better. We have to make our lives better and we have to improve uh, ourselves as well. So the second thing I would say is learn from the things that happen to you in your life. And this could be anything. It doesn't need to be Umrah. It doesn't need to be religious. It could be anything that happens in your life, right? The third thing I would say is be careful of your shoulds. Be careful of your shoulds. What do I mean by your shoulds? A lot of the problems that came up were because of your expectations, because of the expectations we hold. It should be like this. The hotel should be like this. My Umrah should be like this. The aeroplane should be like this. Right? It's all the shoulds that cause the issue. Because if you have these expectations and they're so rigid, they will cause you pain. But if, you're, if you have lower expectations, 
then you're more relaxed. Now, I'm not saying that you have low standards. Um, you know, Muslim mastery, for example, is all about the opposite. It's about having high standards and achieving high results as well. But what I'm saying is that once you give your full effort, if you don't get exactly what you want, then still you need to make sure that you're careful of these shoulds and you're careful of your uh, expectations because unfulfilled expectations, these are the things that make you feel miserable, right? And really when something falls short, it's a good time to look towards gratitude and say, look, you know what? It's not like what I wanted to eat. It's not exactly that, but I should still be grateful, alhamdulillah, that I have aubergines to eat. Otherwise, you know, there's people who don't eat at all, you know? So the third one is be careful of your shoulds. And then the fourth one, is I would say share your stories and experiences so that other people can benefit. You know, Alhamdulillah, Allah is so merciful that he's given us such a wonderful way that I can give you a piece of advice. And if I have that right intention to give you that piece of advice and then you go and implement it, like Allah will reward me for that, right? And you, this is what I say, like it's like that L'Oreal advert. Remember L'Oreal? They're like, what was their tagline? Their tagline was, because you're worth it. And I really have this deep belief that we as human beings, we've gone through so many different experiences. I don't care who you are, I don't care how practicing you are, I don't care you know, where you live or anything. But in your life, you've been through experiences and you've learned and you've improved. And those things, if you can share those with other people, you actually make the human race better overall exponentially in a faster way because you should share an experience with which other people don't need to go through now and they're better through your experience and through your mistakes so the thing i would say is make sure that you share your experiences and share your stories and don't don't be like you know this is something very embarrassing for me to talk about uh, how i ruined my umrah but at the same time i would never ever want this to happen to anyone else and that's why i decided to share it with you so just to recap what are the lessons that i said from this story the first is be prepared for the test and the test will be easier right and realize what your trigger points are for the test second thing is learn from the things that happen to you and make sure that you improve yourself and improve your life the third thing is be careful of your shoulds all the high expectations that you have the unfulfilled expectations be careful of them because they will make you feel miserable and then the fourth thing is to share your story so that other people benefit from your experiences and get there without the pain that we went through so once again guys jazakumullah khair for watching and inshallah i will see you on the next one assalamu alaikum warahmatullah <laughs>